Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. to the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Football Podcast Network. I am your host, DJ Youngs. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is a podcast that you can access at any time, any place, anywhere. So I just want to make sure I cover all of the salutations. So greetings. Happy to be here for another episode. Uh, last episode was technically, I guess, my first episode. Uh, this will be my second. I just wanted to properly reintroduce myself. Uh, my name is DJ Youngs. I'm from Missouri City, Texas, which is a suburb on the southwest end of Houston, Texas. I grew up playing basketball, football, baseball, ran track, you name it. If I could do it, I was into it. I loved having fun with my friends and playing sports. I went on, grew up to go to Texas A&M University on an academic scholarship. There, I just dug deeper into my sports love, learning it through business and things of that nature. Uh, outside of my everyday work life and uh, doing this podcast, of course, I like just traveling. I'm so into going to new places uh, domestically and internationally. Fell in love with that a few years back when I got to go out of the country for the first time. I also like just having game nights, watching movies, anime, and obviously watching sports. Talking about sports, playing sports. I'm a sports guy. I'm into it. Uh, This is why I'm so excited to be your host for this year. Uh, On this show, I plan to just really inform you, keep you updated on the day-to-day League activity, league news, league rumors, hopefully teach you a few things that you may not know about the game that you may have known about the game. And uh, most definitely give you some insight and perspective that I have. Uh, This will be a podcast that you don't want to miss, so definitely tune in. With that being said, here's a quick rundown of how the show is going to go today. Today, uh, and for all my podcasts, I'm really going to start off with what I call new news. Simple, but that's what it's called. New news. So between this episode and the previous episode, I'm going to discuss what I didn't get to talk about last time or what has happened in between the two episodes. Uh, new things, new things talked about. And of course, like I just mentioned, rumors, uh, talks on the streets, uh, what's going on in the football world. Uh, next segment, I will talk about how the contracts and salary caps actually work for players uh, and teams. Because this is something I know that people just hear about and kind of just like, you know, not pay too much attention. You may see a number and be like, oh, wow, that's a lot of money. But I really just want to make it clear on what they're all talking about when they say, oh, this affects the cap this way or they have to release some uh, things of that nature. Next, we're going to go into the top college programs, what they're looking like going into next season, and of course, the people that are leaving those programs that are going into the NFL, discuss them a little further. Last but not least, I'm going to discuss free agents who are available because, of course, things are changing as time goes on right now uh, between, in this offseason between these few days. I uh, just want to let you know who's available, what they're worth, what they're ranked, things of that nature. So, uh, here, you know, we're going to get into it. It's going to be a great show. Uh, tune in. If you need to take a break, pause, but definitely come back. You don't want to miss it. Starting off with new news, uh, what's happening in the football world right now? What, what's going on? What have we been hearing about? Uh, I understand we want to get into that, but first, the first thing I want to do is March is a Women's History Month, so I just want to take a quick second to recognize the women that are doing big things on the football field because, you know, this year and the, really just the past two years have been 
big years for uh, women in the NFL is specifically uh, out there. Um, and just want to, you know, get them some notoriety. You may have heard of some, you may have not. Uh, but just to talk about them real quick, starting off with Sarah Thomas. She's, you know, the, of course, the first full-time NFL uh, official, as you may have seen. Uh, she was hired in 2015 in their program and continued to break barriers. She uh, started from the bottom, if you didn't know, which means she actually started off with, like, little kids games, worked her way up through high school, through the collegiate level, all the way to the NFL. So she did it the right way. This was not a handout. Uh, do not think that this was, like, some type of, oh, diversity hire. Just, no, she earned this position. She started off uh, working in the NFL, officiating at the New Orleans Saints training camp. Got her full-time regular schedule this past year and was a part of the Super Bowl 55 crew this uh, just last month. So salute to Sarah Thomas uh, leading the way. Uh, because of her, you have people like uh, Maya Chaka, who was the first female to, that was hired um, in 2015 as well. But she's the first African-American uh female official that is starting to uh, officiate these NFL games coming up this season. Uh, so that was big news that just came out recently. Uh, of course, if there was probably a Sarah, there may have not been a Maya. Uh, so salute to Maya. Going over to the actual coaching staffs, we may have not heard of, you may have heard of Catherine Smith. She was actually the first female assistant coach in the NFL, and that was back in 2016 with the Buffalo Bills. Um, I do not believe she's in that position anymore. But, again, that's just the start to what happened moving forward for other women, you know, moving things out the way, speed bumps out the way, uh, so that people can see that it's all worth it. Uh, someone else I want to give acknowledgement to is Jennifer King. She's the assistant running back coach for the Washington football team. And how I just talked about Sarah Thomas, like, this, these things aren't just given to these individuals. Um, she definitely worked her way up in 2018. Uh, Jennifer King was a intern wide receiver coach for the Carolina Panthers. Then she moved to assistant wide receiver coach and special teams coach for the Arizona Hot Shots. Okay, came back to the Carolina Panthers 2019 as the intern running back coach. Um, she became an offensive assistant at Dartmouth College. Then that's what she got in 2020 her full time coaching internship. Um, with the Washington football team. She's assistant running back coach now, and that's just a great thing to see. I'm happy to see it. I read a little bit of her story. You know, she was actually coaching at a school nearby the um, Panthers facility, and she said she would come and look through the fencing and watch the practices, and she happened to be at a conference that she ran into Ron Rivera at and kind of told her a story, and he actually gave her the opportunity, which, you know, is really cool, really dope. Uh, shout out to him for doing that, which is why she started off with the Panthers and now with the Washington football team as she is coaching along him. I'm pretty sure, you know, he's leading the way, uh, mentoring her, and, we, you know, definitely happy to see that happen. A few more women I want to acknowledge. You have Lori Lacoste, who is assistant defensive line coach for the, pre the current Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buc Buccaneers, as well as this on that team, Mara uh, Javadir. Uh, she's assistant strength and conditioning coach also on that team. Christy Barlett, she's a strength conditioning coach for the Tennessee Titans. Callie Bronson is the chief of staff for the Cleveland Browns, and she has a really cool rap sheet. Uh, she actually played eight seasons as a safety, running back, and slot receiver for the D.C. Divas uh, Women's Football Alliance. She was a five-time captain, a four-time All-Star. She has two gold medals with the, tech, the uh, Team USA women's football team. I didn't even know this thing. I'm actually excited to look it up and watch some highlights uh, soon and possibly look forward to watching the next matchup in the Olympic Games. Um, she was given her chance, you know, as she became an intern uh, for the Buffalo Bills in 2019 and then got her full-time position that she is currently in now with the Browns. So, shout out to her. Uh, last but not least, uh, Chelsea Romero is the strength conditioning coach with the LA Rams. So, you know, shout out to all those ladies. If it's not obvious, what this shows is one with all the strength conditioning coaches that clearly they know what to do to keep uh, uh, all of us healthy, strong, and fit to compete. 
you know, which is very important. But outside of that, you know, it, they just earned it. All Most of these teams, all these teams are playoff contenders, uh, Super Bowl champions, things of that nature. Um, you know, they, I'm glad they got this opportunity. Uh, love to see more of that. Okay. Moving on from that, going into the big news that come out, touching on everything. So, J.J. Watt. Yes. I didn't get to speak on it last episode, but J.J. Watt to the Cardinals. He announced it by just posting a simple tweet uh, saying the source media picture of him. Uh, looked like he was about to do some squats with an Arizona Cardinals shirt on. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, the red and white looks pretty good on him. Uh, he did agree to a $31 million deal with $23 million guaranteed. Okay, and this is a two-year term. Uh, it's very exciting. Very exciting there. Uh, what are we seeing here? I mean, literally, you have J.J. Watts coming from Houston, Texas, right? Going to meet up, well, again, I'll partner back up with his old teammate, at DeAndre Hopkins. He also tweeted after the news came out and just said, life is good in Arizona. <laughs> uh, recently, um, Chandler Jones had released a, t- a tweet of a DM that him and J.J. shared of, he was saying, man, if you came to the uh, come to Carolina, then I would cook whatever you want. So he he made up on that and said, well, what you want to eat? Because <laughs> he's going to feed him for doing that. But, man, uh, think about that. Chandler Jones, J.J. Watts on the same line. I don't know who is going to double team. That's a wrecking crew to deal with right there. You know, Carolina defense has been on the move. Uh, we've been seeing that for at least the past two seasons, you know. And I'm talking about defense here, not even just uh, the offense. They did go 8-8 eight and eight and missed the playoffs this year, but they definitely had some good stats. They were tied for fourth for sacks. So that's already saying that their defense is getting to the quarterback, and they just added a top defensive player that is known for getting to the quarterback. So it's only going to get better. It's only up from here. Uh, having both of them on that team – um, I'm excited to see where they will go. Now, overall, um, defensive-wise, for yards per game, they fell right in the middle. Uh, nothing too crazy as far as what entailed like them leading or falling back too far. They have room for improvement. Don't get me wrong. Uh, like I said, the team did go 8-8. Eight and eight. So we'll see what this upcoming season looks like. Um, nothing but excitement, like I said. Um, next up, we have the Dak Prescott sign. He is signed. He is no longer on the franchise tag, ladies and gentlemen. For after two years of repeated debate and back and forth between the organization, Jerry Jones, Dak Prescott, and team, they have come to a four-year, $160 million contract. Including 160, 126 million guaranteed. Okay, like this is big. Uh, I'm not a Cowboys fan, but I'm happy to see this because I'm someone that believed that Prescott deserved it. I unfortunately had to sit in college at Texas A&M University, watch him at Mississippi State come and destroy us. Uh, that's actually how I was introduced to this guy. But to see him come as far as he did, have the rookie season he did uh, in Dallas. And now finally get uh, the paycheck that he deserves is happy to see. He, um, like I said uh, at the beginning, the top of the show, that I would definitely be going into more detail on what this actually looks like. What does this actually look like to the team and how it's broken down and as how, as far as how it's paid? I would definitely give you those details so that that would be clear. And maybe, you know, like I said, you'll either learn something or you'll know you'll already know it, but have more more details on it okay i did just catch some of the conference the conference was today uh and you know dak was you know he was he seems excited jerry seemed excited um they asked dak about his health he said he's ready to go he said he he wanted to basically you know come out run and jump on the stage but he didn't basically want to do too much (laughs) and scare everybody or anything like that which i understand i I don't you know I, i don't advise that i would hate that a mishap happened just because he wanted to show off um now just real quick before i know i'm gonna talk about it in more detail in the next segment but 
sixty six million of that contract is guaranteed. Is 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 his highest? Uh, is his sign uh, so, signing bonus? Sorry, it's his signing bonus. So that's cool because he, you know, is the highest paid. He has the highest paid signing bonus of any in anybody in NFL history. Okay, you have Dak Prescott with sixty six million. Russell Wilson, $65 million. Aaron Rodgers at $57.5 million. Matthew Stafford, $50 million. Then you got Matt Ryan, Joe Flacco, and Aaron Donald on that. So Aaron Donald is the highest non-quarterback position signing bonus. Um, and, again, like I said, I'm going to tell you more details on what a signing bonus actually is come soon. Now, looking at the Cowboys, what does this mean for the Cowboys? Well, thankfully, they have a good offensive squad that is locked in for a little while. Okay, we're going into the 2021 season. The Cowboys have C.D. Lamb signed through 2023. Blake Jarwin signed through 2023. Uh, Dak Prescott now signed through 2024. Amari Cooper is through 2024. And Zeke Elliott is signed through 2026. Okay, so they're all together. That means the chemistry is only going to get better. It should not get worse. <laughs> uh, we saw what this this beginning of the season was looking like. They have putting up some big points. They were fighting. Unfortunately, it was a struggle still because, you know, the defense had the other teams pretty much keeping up. It was close games, almost too close. Too close for comfort, I'm sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how the organization felt. I'm pretty sure that's how Dak Prescott felt. Um, this is why him... You know, going down and things that were coming about was so tough for him and the team because I'm sure that they knew that they at least had a fighting chance and they just were trying to get that turnaround. They was trying to do everything it took to get to that point where it was naturally, you know, naturally coming out and winning with no trouble. Because, I mean, if we're being honest, they, they were in the NFC least. I mean, East, sorry. Um, they didn't have that much competition. There was a lot of struggles in that division. Uh, and everybody, I feel like anybody that looked at anything on paper could tell that the Cowboys were the best option, best chance of taking that division. So um, they did get rid of the defensive coordinator, Mike Nolan, uh, this past se- off season, And got Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn's coming from, you know, the good old days of Seahawks, uh, Legion of Boom. But, you know, that was a while ago. But they got big hopes for him. I'm, I'm hoping to see he does something well there. I uh, just want to see good football. I'm, I didn't mention that top here, but I mentioned last episode that I don't have a team in the NFL, guys. So I'm not biased. I, I, I'm I'm very fair. I'm, I just like watching football. I like seeing good ball. I mean, I'm a fan just like everyone that's listening right now. So, I know if you have a team, you may not like the Cowboys because I feel like 90% of the teams, even if you're not in the division, you don't like the Cowboys because of many different reasons. A lot of the reasons I hear being that is mainly because of their fans. <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I don't know. But I just like seeing good football, so that's my take on that. We'll see. Uh, I don't feel like there's too much pressure on Dak here. I think Dak just has to honestly just go out and do what he's been doing. Um, he's been, you know, resting because of his injury and his surgery. I'm pretty, but I believe that he was much so focused on getting back to the team, uh, doing what it takes mentally, studying things of that nature. So if he goes in there and be the leader that we all seen him be these past few years, they're going in the right direction. So that was a good job, Dallas. Good job, Jerry. Uh, y'all made the right choice. I believe on that end. Um, in other news. Russell Wilson was left out of a letter to the season ticket holders. Why is this big news? Well, it's mostly because, you know, everybody's reading into stuff a little deep these days. Um, We do have, you know, a a lot on the line right now for individuals, uh, team-wise, especially quarterbacks. Uh, It was mentioned that Russell wanted to stay with the Seahawks. But he did have a few other options that he wanted to go to. One of them being the Cowboys, which I guess is off the table now. Uh, for teams he wanted to go to. But, you know, his intent his intent was definitely to stay with the Seahawks. Um, it's been talked about on all the sports networks throughout the week. Just because all this has been going on. Different things have been said, but nothing has come from Russ. So, um, 
you could take it silent whatever way you want to. But just to give you perspective on this letter on why it's a big deal, it's like, oh, a letter came in and it mentions DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, you know, it shouts them out. Even the new offensive coordinator, Sean Waldron, and uh, the running back coordinator, Andy Dickerson. It, you know, it talks about all these people, tell them that they just want to bring them a Super Bowl and things of that nature, but nothing about Russell Wilson, especially being that maybe with all the question marks right now, you might want to help ensure uh, Russell Wilson, not even Russell Wilson, but quarterbacks in the league are possibly the number one reason you have bodies in the seats. So you definitely want to give them, I guess, at least that reassurance with everything that's going on right now, right? Or so I would think so. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I would like him to stay there. I think that's a good team for him. I like what he's been doing with the team. Uh definitely was a big fan of the Russell uh, to DK connections this season. I uh, would like to see more of that, um, but we'll see. Like I said, it's just kind of something that people want to talk about. It's not. I don't really know if it's real news. It just could be a rumor. <laughs> um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, are definitely bringing back and re-signed linebacker Levante David for a two-year, twenty-five million dollar deal. This is big because this was a huge aspect. He was a huge aspect to their defense. Uh, you know, he's a starting linebacker who had 117 tackles. Uh, the only person to do better than him was Devin White. And next up underneath was someone with 94 tackles. So that kind of shows you where he was at on the spectrum. Getting there, he had 14 tackles for loss, which is also second on the team. This was a big thing. You know, he's a Super Bowl winner. He deserved that position. I uh, think he's only going to get better to... Happy to see that they made that decision um, with some news that I'm going to tell you in a second. Some other things, unfortunately, might change on the team, but uh, we'll stay close to it. And I'll keep you informed on everything that's happening with the uh, Super Bowl champions. The Tennessee Titans have agreed to trade offensive lineman Isaiah Wilson for a first round pick. Okay, the Miami Dolphins are the people that they are trading them to. And really, I believe it's the Titans who have just struggled, you know, with the young man. Um, unfortunately, he's had uh, the downfall. He's, you know, been arrested for DUIs and a lot of other issues have come about. But uh, Wilson did go to the same high school as head coach Brian Flores for the Dolphins. So there's that one, that connection that Brian Flores believes he can have with him and, you know, connect with as well as uh, one of their starting guards, Solomon Kindley, also played with Wilson at Georgia. Um, he's a very, he's a big talent. You know, he was drafted uh, first round. So, I'm sorry, he was drafted. Yeah, he was drafted first round. Um, so, yeah, the, the official trade is um, the Titans will send the seventh round pick uh, for in 2022 and Wilson to Miami for their seventh round to uh, complete that deal. So looking up forward to that, uh, Bud Dupree, a linebacker from the Steelers, uh, they did not they decided not to franchise tag. him, So he'll be released into free agency. Uh, he was their first round pick. A few years ago, and I guess you know between the injuries, uh, they feel like there might have been a slight decrease in his effort or at least his success uh, there on the team. But yeah, that that's something that is going to go the long way. Someone's definitely going to go pick him up. That guy is a beast coming off that line. Uh, I've seen some mean hits. You could definitely go look at some crucial hits from uh, Dupree online and kind of get an idea of what they're dealing with there. Big news in the NCAA, Les Miles is done being uh, the head coach at Kansas University. Uh, this came out, uh, basically the reports may have, uh, it may deal with the accusations of inappropriate behavior that he had with female students at while he was at LSU. So, both uh, Les and the administration agreed to part ways. Um, if you don't know who Les Miles is, he began his head coaching at Oklahoma State, where he coached from 2001 to 2004. Following that, he coached LSU from 2005 to 2016. 
while he was there, they got the national title in 2007 and competed for the title in 2011. Okay, so you know he was a big deal, and you know, we already know LSU has been a big program, and part of the reason for that is because of Les Miles. Give him that credit for sure. However, his after he left LSU in 2016, he uh, had some time off from uh, coaching, and Kansas hired him in 2019. Miles was three and eighteen in his two seasons at Kansas, including a zero and nine record this past season. Uh, Kansas hasn't won more than three games in uh, <laughs> in a season since two thousand and nine. So I don't know if it's Kansas. I don't know if it's less. It could have definitely been a combination. But at the end of the day, <laughs> this was probably best. Uh, well, wow then. Um, also, news that came out today after deliberation um, has been coming out that, you know, we all knew that the NFL cap was going to be affected after COVID-19 and everything that happened this past season um, between the NFL and the Players Association. Uh, they were trying to decide. The NFL did let them know it was not going to be below $180 million, but we didn't know until today when they released that the season will uh Season salary cap, it was reported to be $182.5 million, which is quite a bit down from last year's $198.2 million in 2022. Uh, again, I'm going to get more into that in my next segment, just so you can understand what that means, what it looks like specifically for the teams. Uh, last thing I got for you guys right now in this segment is that the CFL and the XFL are in talks for a partnership, which would be pretty cool. You know, the Canada Football League, the XFL is the team that, uh, if you haven't heard, Dwayne The Rock Johnson just purchased. Uh, They're doing some collaboration. He had announced that they were going to relaunch in 2022, so, you know, pretty sure they had some things they have to get in order. But with the help from the CFL, I'm pretty sure they'll move things along a little faster, so we'll be keeping you close into keeping up with that, okay? All right. That's everything I got for new news. Uh, up next, I'm going to discuss on how contracts are set up for the players, what they look like, uh, specifically between the salary, what's guaranteed, what's not guaranteed, uh, and what a salary cap is and how it's set up for teams, why it exists. Um, and from there, we'll go to what's going on collegiately, collegiate football teams, uh, kids going into the draft, and then free agency. All right. This is GSMC Football Podcast. Stay tuned. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Tune into the GSMC Football Podcast with your host, DJ Youngs. A recap of the last segment. I just was giving out news, rumors, information on what's happened recently within the NFL, NCAA, uh, mainly big news. It is the offseason, so it's nothing too crazy. It's just we're really finding out what teams are doing to restructure themselves for the upcoming season. Uh, in this new segment, I will be describing and explaining the best way possible that I can on how a contract and salary cap works. 
uh, basically what is a salary cap, uh, why it exists, and how it affects these deals that we're seeing. Uh, later on, stay tuned in. We're going to get into some college sports, uh, what to look for in the draft, and free agency, okay? All right, so segment two, let's talk money. All right, let's break this down. We're going to start with the salary cap because, again, it starts off with the salary cap on how everything else comes into play. All right, so it's kind of what you hear. I'm I'm, I'm going to do my best to keep this uh, pretty basic explanation. One, because since this is audio and not uh, visual, it's not like I can really show a lot of things. Uh, so we have to use our imagination, and I want to make sure everyone's able to keep up with me. And uh, two... It's so much more that goes into it, like, you you know how it is. You might as well be a lawyer to really get down to everything, but I want to give you the basics so that you can kind of understand. So, a salary cap. It's it's a cap on the salary. It's, it's a limit on the amount of money teams are able to use to spend on players, okay? Now, this started in 1994, all right, and the amount has definitely pretty much increased almost every year now uh it did start off at 34 million when it started off in 94 and as i just mentioned in the last segment it just came out today that for the upcoming season the salary cap is going to be 182.5 million per team this is about eight percent down from the 100 198.2 million that it was in the previous season now why is that what is the salary cap based off of? So the salary cap is based off of the revenues of the league. Okay, so we know that clearly players have a big, 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 big impact clearly that on the money that the league receives. Uh, they are the reason people are coming to watch and buying tickets. They are the reason people uh, pay for streaming services or uh, the reason that the network TV networks want to make the deals that they have exclusive rights to air certain games as well as, you know, simple stuff as merchandise. So, you know, bobbleheads and jerseys and everything of that nature. OK, so what they came up with is that we're going to take all that money that is made throughout the season. And basically distribute that, balance that out amongst all the teams. And that's why it's been increasing because, of course, with all the different technology, all the different business ventures that have come about within these past years, um, it only the, the money only goes up. We, you know, football itself is like a billion trillion dollar business. Uh, you know, I know you've heard all the statistics that happened with the NCAA where because they don't have to pay their players how much of a big money revenue that business is. So in the NFL, they're actually paying their players. So it's a little different. Okay. Now, why, you know, is there a cap on it? Why not just pay everybody as much as they clearly want? Right. Well, the problem with that is different teams are valued different. They make different amounts of money. Let's be honest. I mean, be honest, you know, some are in an area or a city that I actually is just, you know, maybe populated more, right? That's a simple way. But at the same time, there's a lot of them that's just in a bigger money market uh, or have a bigger brand awareness, longer brand awareness, because some teams are newer than others. But, I mean, just a big one that I know is uh, well known is that the Dallas Cowboys are literally like the uh, highest valued brand in sports. OK, uh, so just in 20, just in 2020, I believe they were um, valued at five point seven billion dollars. So with them valued at five point seven billion dollars and let's see, looking at Buffalo Bills valued at like two billion. That's a big money difference. OK, first of all, one billion dollars is a big money difference. OK, now this is over three <laughs> and. If they could just use, you know, the money that they came about or what they were valued as and just pay whoever they want, don't you think that everybody would be there? You know, everybody, you know, that they want, that they can pay, pay whatever they want to. They would make that move to whatever team they want that they want to make super teams and all be paid what they want to be paid. These type of things could happen. And what that would do is take the 
competitive advantage away from the league. Uh, it might not be too interesting anymore. It might be a little uh, leaned onto one side, especially if there become one team or a couple cities that people want to gravitate toward more. So this this is put into place to keep things a little fair. Now, again, the cap is just for the players based off their salaries, paid salaries. This does not go to coaches, uh, staff, trainers, any other personnel at all. And each year, each season, all the teams combined must average 95% of the cap for the salaries of that year. So it isn't like, oh, I'm going to sit here and not pay anybody and just bomb this year, save all this money, and then, you know, I'm going to use it later on because the, the money does roll over. You do get the, if you don't use all your cap, whatever you don't use, it does roll over to the next season. So to prevent that type of thing happening, they had put in place that you have to uh, average 95% of that, right? Okay, so um, going back to the bigger side of the salary cap uh, and where is the money coming from now a percentage of this before it is um distributed to become a cap all the revenue all the money that is brought in by the league it, it i believe it's 48 percent of that is what goes to the the players the other 52 is to the owners uh among that 48 percent you take about a fifth of that away to go toward player benefits, you know, their health benefits and uh, long-term Social Security, things of that nature. Now, with the rest of it, that's where it's split up for the cap, okay? So that's why it's averaged and, you know, calculated. Of course, this is a much longer, deeper calculation <laughs> that they have that actually brings them to this number. But that's typically what's going on on the highest level to see how they get there, all right? So that's why the cap exists. That's how it works. Now, looking at the players' contracts and how they affect the cap. Now, there's different parts to it, um, which is why you know it, it, it that you see that they are structured so differently. You hear that this is the signing bonus, this is the salary, this is, you know, the the roster bonus. They have all these different things because they affect the cap in different ways. So, salaries, obviously. The base salary that a player is paid in a year of directly affects that salary cap that year. Of course, you know, no, uh, not too many players have like a regular salary that they get paid pay years, not like $1 million this year, this year, this year. It's usually a different range and it's typically increasing because what owners are trying to do, what the uh, team's trying to do is usually have the players take a smaller salary in the beginning and a large one later on because they, you know, want to have a chance of if they're not there in those later years they won't have to pay that now you might ask why would a player decide to do that why would they take the chance of you know making one million year one and then having the option to make 20 million in year four but they can be released by then well that's what comes in with the signing bonus the signing bonus is literally like this is the money i will pay you to sign this deal that's why those are literally the ones that get higher and higher every sign, every signing. OK, the guaranteed money always gets higher, too, because that's something else that locks them in. All right. So uh, also that make and the reason that they can make these big signing bonuses to guarantee them uh, the the security that they're looking for. Is because even though it's hey, this is what I'm paying you to sign this today, it doesn't. It gets split up amongst those years. Okay, so let's say you had a a four million dollar signing bonus on a four year contract. You get that four million dollars. All four million dollars of it, no matter what base salary is, but the way that it affects the salary cap for your team is. 
that that four million is going to be split up amongst those four years, and they're only going to be taking a one million dollar hit for each year. All right, and if they were to release you before the four years up were up, so let's say they release you in year after year two, which means two years pass by, one million, one million, there's two million left, then that means they take a two million dollar hit on that upcoming season instead of just the one that they originally would have. All right. Now that kind of gives you just a little like again, I'm going into more detail, but I just trying to slowly break it down. All right. Um, that's the way the signing bonus works. That's the way the base salary is. Like I said, it typically increases and it goes directly to what whatever it is is directly hit that year. Um, something else that the are usually in these contracts are roster bonuses, which says, hey, if you were still on a team at this date when the season uh, starts, or usually it's before when the season starts, it's when the operation starts, which are usually um, in March, actually. So they're usually in this month. And then you will get this bonus, okay? And so that's that's to help with longevity. And then the other bonus that they typically get is just a um a workout bonus basically it's like hey if you come to all the off season trainings off season workouts this is how much we'll pay you now those two things do not uh get split up those do affect those years that they are used in which is why they are all typically usually later on as well course it's not like a hey if you're still on this team next year <laughs> then we'll pay you this is typically on deals that are four plus years and it's in year three four five all right um that's how that is working now i want to give a couple examples just so that you can maybe follow a little bit better on what i'm trying to say here so let, let, let's start off with dak prescott you know he's the big money man that just came through <laughs> Big news on his end, he agreed to a four-year, $160 million contract, including $126 million guaranteed, all right? It does have, you know, uh, an extra year extension and possible option, um, so that was that is to help basically with their salary cap and uh, spread out that uh, bonus, which the bonus, the signing bonus is $66 million, the highest in NFL history. All right, with a record of seventy-five million due in year one. Now you're gonna ask now why is that? I'm gonna tell you in just a second. Okay, the first three years of the deal, he has to, he's averaging about forty-two million per year, which makes him the the second highest paid player <laughs> in the league. I about to say just quarterbacks, but honestly, you know, no one's getting paid more than these quarterbacks. Uh, above him, honestly, is just Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is getting paid around $45 million. You got Dak Prescott, $40 million. Uh, Watson currently for the Houston Texans, $39 million. Russell Wilson with the Seahawks, $35 million. And then uh, Rodgers and Jared Goff are making about $33.5 million. So that's kind of sad. And they, they, like, again, that's about their average uh, salary per year on what they're making uh, based off of the – bonus, um, any incentives, and their base salary. All right. Now, let me show you how this really affected the Cowboys' salary cap. All right. So, with Dak Prescott's base salary for year one being $9 million, and that $66 million signing bonus is split up between the five years like i said it's a four-year deal with the five option to help them spread that out that breaks breaking up that 66 million you get 13.2 million a year now 13.2 and nine put together is 22.2 all right so that is what will hit the cowboy salary cap in this upcoming season where originally, if they were to franchise tag him again, giving him the average of the top five quarterbacks in the league, 
that was going to be $37.7 million. They are saving $15.5 million against their cap this year, which is what they almost had no choice but to do because we all know that the pandemic hit and that's why there is this decrease in the salary cap. It has been decreased because there were no fans in the stands. If there were fans at certain stadiums, they were very, very limited. Okay? So they had to, you know, decrease because the money that they are typically used to getting every year was not there um, at all, if not limited. Okay? Now, the Cowboys... I don't believe or really having the worst case scenario for the salary caps. <laughs> I've definitely heard worse. Now they are paying uh, quite a bit of their players in this upcoming year. So that is what, you know, would take effect. Uh, they are paying Zeke. They are paying the receivers and now they're paying Dak. So that's that them combined, I believe, uh, with Zeke and with Zeke and Cooper and Dak, they're spending about three hundred fifty mil. Uh, well, that's what no, that's what they spent over the last three off seasons. So, and again, like I said, that that it's going to decrease because now they're not paying Dak that franchise tag. Helps a lot. Okay. So. Going more into the breakdown of Dak Prescott's situation. Now, I mentioned that 126 mil guaranteed. Now, that's looking at he has the salary. He has the, the 66. And then he has a signing bonus. I mean, he has a roster bonus uh, that will come in year four of $5 million. Uh, that's an incentive. And he has a base salary that's increasing each year. So it goes from $9 million into the 22 season is going to be $20 million. The 2023 20, season is going to be $31 million. 2024 season is going to be $29 million. Okay? that That's why these are increased so much. So that means the cap is going to be increased. They're still averaging up $13.2 million to each year for the cap space, though. So in year, if he's there a year 2024, he's going to hit the cap for $47.2 million. Now, if they were to release him, he's still guaranteed that $126 uh, million that he should have collected the previous years. And that will save them the twenty nine. million million dollars for the hit that year uh plus the five million on the roster bonus in year 2024 okay the only hit that they they will take that year is for the the two years with the what's that the the 26.4 so it'll go from 47 to 26.4 million on the hit and that's a decision that they'll just have to make you know um later on which I mean, I think Dak has a pretty good setup. I think he'll be fine. Um, he'll make it happen, uh, possibly. Ho- I'm, I'm hoping for his longevity. So, we should be able to see that kind of paid out. Moving on to another example real quick. We'll look at J.J. Watt's contract. You know, he has a two-year, $28 million uh, signing bonus of $12 million. Okay, so split that up between the, between the uh, years. And um, fourteen million dollar average salary. He's guaranteed twenty three million. All right. Now, with JJ's, his is actually not just bid up into two years for the signing bonus. Signing bonus is split up four years. Four or five with two minus options. Um. As you can tell, I just like that too. Um, but it, it um he will be getting a base salary of two point five million this upcoming season, and it jumps up to eleven point two five, eleven point yeah point two five million uh, next season, with a roster bonus of the same of two point 
two five million. All right. So this year, being that his signing bonus split up, it's only going to be two point four million this year plus a two point five salary. He's only hitting the cap for four point nine million. Whereas next year, when his salary jumps up to eleven point two five, it'll be hitting the cap for fifteen point nine million. All right. Now this is just kind of like I said, kind of giving you an idea of what is going on with their contracts. Now when it comes to extensions, they add those. When you hear about oh the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers agreed to a contract extension, they kind of go back in, they uh, restructure a few things, and let's say you got two years left on and on your original contract, and they give you an extension for a five year deal. Now what they get to do is whatever that bonus is, the whatever's left plus the new one, they get to divide up on seven years, which is typically going to be a smaller hit to the cap. That's why they like doing those. If they believe that this is their franchise quarterback and that they can save money as far as the cap per year, have more room for more players, that's what they do. Now, what is the franchise tag? You heard me mention a couple of times with Dak Prescott. I kind of said it would a little bit of it but it's really there's some negative connotation on the franchise tag mainly through players because they feel like it's a little controlling um this is where you see that the ownership and the agents of the players or and of the players having trouble coming to an agreement they they haven't decided on what they want to do long term after those rookie deals are coming up due and they have to make a decision on either keeping this player or they get or they're going to be gone into the free agent market. But a lot of times they don't want to do that because they know they want to work when they just want to uh, somehow figure out how to agree. So what they say is, hey, franchise tag, meaning, hey, I'll pay you in this one year. You, you stay for one year while we figure this out and I'll pay you the average on five on these five positions, which. Nine times out of ten, I can't really think of a position that that is a problem in. And quarterback, and like I said, Dax would have been he would have been paid thirty seven point seven million for one year. Okay, that's still pretty good pay wise. Uh, I I wouldn't argue with it personally, but um, <laughs> we're living in two different tax brackets. Uh, but that that's typically what they do. I know it's happened to as high as that as. And then as low as something like, you know, around the kickers. I know Pat McAfee said he got franchise tagged once and when he was with the Colts. And that looked at about $2 million, right? And I'm pretty sure that was more than what he was getting paid because they haven't, you know, re- made him a new deal yet. So he took it. Uh, but the problem with this is you want longevity. That's As a player, you want to have some security. Like, hey, I, things happen. Football is a dangerous sport. I don't want to just have this one-year deal, then somebody push me to the side. I want to be able to be here for a long time and, you know, play the game I love and support my family. So that's where the franchise tag comes into problem. Now, why is it that money continue to go up as far as in these deals still? What I mean, yes, the cap is going up, but why do players like the quarterbacks keep literally breaking the barrier on highest paid quarterback, highest paid player in the league each time there's a new one signed. Well, this kind of plays into what the NFL Player Association have, you know, a finger in. And they're just there to, you know, have the collective bargaining agreements with the NFL and make sure that the players are um, compensated appropriately for, you know, making sure that the league isn't taking advantage of them and taking all the wages that are being made through these players. So they have, you know, made the plan that every time you're up to have a deal. So if you're, you know, Dak Prescott was up, uh, I mean, of course he couldn't pass Pat. His is lower than Pat Mahomes because that's because Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes. He was the super, uh, ex Super Bowl champion, uh, you know, baby goat, on his way to being possibly passing Tom Brady, as a lot of people would like to talk about. 
We're not really sure what's going to happen, but we'll see. But what's happening there is that uh, these people can pay more because if it ever comes that you, it becomes stagnant or someone gets paid lower, they decide to pay these players lower, then eventually the ownership is going to be taking advantage of the players. They are going to be making more of the money with the increase on the cap that I spoke about earlier, the increase on the revenue. Um, so you have to, they have to make sure they keep moving that meter as long as the league's moving that meter along and making it a fair compensation for everyone around the league by just making sure you handle your business and make the right deal on your team individually, okay? But in all in all, um, that is my quick small overview of what a salary cap is, why it exists, what's going on in it, uh, how these deals affect the player, the league, why, you know, things of that nature. I uh, definitely will be talking more about this, I'm sure, as uh, the rest of the offseason goes on because we'll hear about the players that are going to be franchise tagged. We'll hear about more deals that come along, and I'll do my best to continue to learn more about these and give you all the information needed, all right? That's all I have for that segment. Stay tuned. Up next, we're going to be talking about some NCAA game stuff. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back. You are listening to GSMC Football Podcast on the GSMC Podcast Network. Uh, I am your host again, DJ Youngs. Uh, recapping last segment, I described what a salary cap is and everything about it and how it takes effect onto the deals and contracts that players get. Next up, we're going to be discussing the uh, college football teams that going into this next season, what they're looking like, what the top teams have going on, who left who do they have now? Why is it still relevant? And then we're going to finish up next uh, on the last segment, uh, just talking about free agency, who's available as of right now, who, you know, what are they worth, some teams that could possibly be looking at getting them, things of that nature. So moving on, uh, of course, we're going to start where it matters, okay? We're going to start right at Texas A&M University. Uh, Texas A&M did go 9-1 and this past season, which is great. Because they have not been doing that. Alright. Uh, 9-1. Their only loss, let me say, though, is to Bama, who was undefeated. Alabama University. And uh, they finished uh, in the AP poll at number four. Okay. Just missed the playoffs last season. And then uh, definitely made a statement piece in the Orange Bowl uh, that they were in. Uh, defeating 
the University of North Carolina by two touchdowns, all right? Now, the biggest thing is who's going to play quarterback next year, all right? Killamon, long-time tenured quarterback that has been there for the past few years, is leaving. But and this is this is the definitely the lighting of beyond the clouds, okay? We, I'm sorry, Texas A&M still has running back Isaiah Spiller and Devon Chain. Okay, as well as the running back, receiver, jack of all trades, Anaya Smith. All right. If you weren't paying attention, the duo of Isaiah Spiller and Devon Achaney is basically what it was like to have Mark Ingram and. Um, oh, man, I'm going blank on the Saints. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on one second. Alvin Kamara. Well, I don't know why I went blank on Alvin Kamara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like having them to Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara in the backfield for the Saints two seasons ago, wrecking havoc, switching them out. Uh, and that's basically what the the Aggies had, man. Um, really, they weren't even using Devon Achaney as much as they, I believe they should. Uh, a colleague of mine, uh, he... Actually, was talking about him a lot because he coached at that guy's high school. And I got to watch him a couple times. And he was amazing. Then I saw him in the college and what he did in the Orange Bowl alone. He didn't come in until the second half. And he won MVP. And if you see the highlights, you know why. All right? Uh, Magnificent talent. As well as Anaya Smith. He gets things done. Good with his hands. Getting around. Get open. He's a great route runner. Um, They had keeping those skilled players very, very impressive. All right. Now, uh, Jimbo does have at quarterback uh, Haynes King. He was the number three dual quarterback uh, coming out in 2020 in the 2020 class. All right. The number three dual threat quarterback. Um, So that's a big deal. He also signed Eli Stowers, who was the number five dual threat quarterback in the 2021 class. So he'll be coming out this year. Okay, these are two big signings, signings, uh, and both probably have the what the team is gonna pretty much need and look forward to coming into this season. Those are the big offensive differences, though. Um, but just keep you in mind, where do they rank with their prospects? Okay, so Texas A&M with a projected ESPN 300 prospects, the top 300. Um, on the 2021 roster. So coming back, they'll have 39 of those guys, okay? 35 of them are from the 2019 to 2021 class alone, all right? So those are the future talents of the whole league of the NCAA, and they'll be there breaking havoc for Texas A&M. Really excited. Um, Keeping in the SEC a team that has more prospects, but still taking a tough hit on some of their stars coming back uh, is Florida. So the Florida Gators, uh, with the top 300, have 42 of the of the top 300 prospects in, on the 2020 roster. All right, uh, they will be losing key players as the quarterback Kyle Trask, the number one tight end, some argue number one receiver. Period. Kyle Pitts. Receiver Trevon Grimes, uh, safety Brad Stewart, defensive lineman uh, Kyrie Campbell, and a few others. So it, it's it's quite a number of them. Uh, they finished eight and four. Uh, they lost to LSU, Texas A&M, Alabama, <laughs> and Oklahoma this past season. Uh, but they were definitely in the SEC championship. It was um, worth. Uh, it was a good season for that team. Okay. Um, looking at what they have, they do have uh, two quarterbacks in the ESPN 300, um, or at least they former. They uh, <laughs> the, uh, the former ones. They have uh, Jalen Katina, which is a four-star in the 2021 class, um, all as well as Carlos Del Rio. Okay. Uh, Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson are on the roster already and uh, signed. I mean, those those were former 
ESPN 300 that helped sign those individuals. Uh, they also brought back running back Demarcus Bowman, who was the number 23 ranked recruit in the 2020 class and originally signed with Clemson, but now is with uh, Florida. Uh, the defensive coaches signed 18 of the 300, top 300 defensive recruits from the 2019 to 2021 time period. Uh, so they got a lot of great people moving in there to make a difference. All right. Uh, One of their biggest ones was Jason Marshall. He's the number one ranked corner of the 2021 class. And Corey Collier is the number three safety. And both should eventually be, you know, a big contributor to that team going into this upcoming season after they get out of high school. Um, We'll definitely see what they will be up to. Okay. Again, keeping it in. The SEC, I do want to continue because these are these are te- the number one teams that everyone's watching, right? These are the ones that people are paying attention to. So, uh, moving over to LSU. Now, this team isn't ranked. Okay, they weren't ranked. They finished five and five. It was a, definitely a tougher year for them um, to go from being on top number one to not ranked. I'm sure. Uh, it, I don't know. If anyone expected them to win back after losing Joe and and everyone, but um, they still matter, okay? Uh, they, they'll have you know a veteran quarterback in Miles Brennan back, um, but Max Johnson could also you know get a look. I guess we'll find out closer. I haven't heard much on that, but as the, you know, we get close to the season, they'll definitely report who the starters are and things of that nature. Uh, but the projected ESPN 300 prospects, top 300. Um, on the 2021 roster, LSU will have 43, 43 players. All right. That is really good. So, um, yeah, but they still need quite a bit, you know, uh, needs to be replacing, you know, they have receiver Terrence Marshall, Jr. Tight end, Arik Gilbert, who had transferred, um, Linebacker Jabril Cox and safety Jacoby Stevens all leaving, but the uh, but they have you know like I said the quarterback still there that's a big part. Um, wide receiver Kashawn Boat, uh, who led the team in receiving yards this past year and had five touchdowns, he will be returning. That's good to hear. All right, now I know you're probably wondering you know what about Chase. Uh, uh, all right, is it Jamar Chase? Yeah, what about Jamar Chase? Jamar Chase actually, you know, was chilling and sitting out there so that he can, you know, get prepared for the draft, uh, which he's definitely like the number one choice for receiver going in this year. Uh, looking forward to see where you go. Uh, rumor has it that, you know, well, I don't want to say rumor has it, but people are projecting. People will, you know, give their opinions, give what they think is going to happen. Oh, excuse me. Uh, what's going to happen, uh, upcoming teams, what they're going to do, what they need. Uh, a team that is in need of a receiver that they believe Jamar Chase will fit in well is the Ravens. Okay? And I find that really cool just because, I mean, think about that duo. Think about, I mean, you already got Hollywood Brown there, right? Uh, you add somebody else in there, and I'd, I'd say they even get a, need to get a tight end as well. Uh, Andrews is good, but it'll just be more diverse. Um, having Lamar Jackson throw to Jamar Chase would be like it'd be it'd be crazy. It'd be great. Um, it'd be prime time. It'd be electrifying. Uh, you'll be able to watch some pretty good games all around when they play other great duos when they play the Tariqs and Mahomes when they play the Metcalfs and Wilsons uh shoot um even the Kyler and you know Kyler Murray and his squad that he's about to have possibly they I think they might even get um someone to help them on the receiving end because I think it has not been said if Larry Fitzgerald is going to be leaving or not um but at the end of the day, in my opinion, they still have the number one receiver. And, um, oh my gosh, why am I going blank on names? Okay, sorry. So, 
uh, Deshaun Hopkins. Oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on. Sorry about that. Uh, but I like to keep this very transparent as as if it's a live radio show. So you will hear me make mistakes. Just bear with me, you know, and definitely leave your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get better, but the, that that'd be an exciting team to see play and get together. Um, but yeah, let me let me know what you think about that. All right, moving on to another team, top team. Uh, we're gonna go over to Clemson. You know, Clemson has been like top two, not even like Clemson has been one of the top two uh, programs in the league for quite some time now. Um, it's been very impressive what they've been doing there. Uh, you do have Trevor Lawrence. He's not going to be there. Uh, we all pretty much expect him. And as I said in the last episode, and if he's not, then something's wrong. But he's supposed to be the number one pick in the draft. Going to the Jaguars. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, they do need that assistance. They do need a quarterback. Someone uh, definitely a franchise quarterback. I cannot uh, really say when the last time the Jacksonville Jaguars had a franchise quarterback. So, Hopefully Trevor Lawrence could be that person. Hopefully Deshaun Watson stay in that division, and we are able to see that fight between those quarterbacks in that division. Because you'll have not only two Clemson alumni going at it, two young guys, two gunslingers, and Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson, but also you have uh, Carson Wentz who just got over there. You know, so I think you know he's trying to make his a statement. On his end as well, uh, be very interesting to see. So, but getting back to Clemson, uh, Travis team, Eden, uh, he's going to be back. I mean, he's he's not suiting up anymore. Uh, but they still expect to have a good college season. You know, they've been recruiting. Um, they have the the backup quarterback for Clemson, DJ Igulewele. I'm don't I'm you know just. Yeah, I didn't even say it. I know I said it wrong. I apologize. I'm going to just call him DJ because my name is DJ. So, my boy DJ, <laughs> he did get to start those two games when Lawrence had to sit out, and he did good. Okay. Uh, so, he'll be there, It's you know, with um, Justin Ross being healthy, you know, who just missed his past season. Uh, do you, you know, they, they have a good chance. Okay. Um, that will be exciting still. They will – more than likely still be in the running as they have been these past few years. All right. Uh, the next team I want to get over to is Ohio State. So um, they are averaging. Oh, I don't know if I said how many pros- the, the prospect number for Clemson. But Clemson has uh, 53 top one, 300 kids on their roster going into the next season. So. That's good. Uh, now, a little bit higher than them is Ohio State with 57 prospects on the three on the three, top 300 list going into 2021. Okay. They average uh, about 5.4, which is, you know, pretty impressive as far as the average class ranking. Um, given that, you know, we've had some outliers because of the past year, um, they 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 had the number sixteen class you know in a tough year uh, which is pretty good that uh, coincided Urban Meyer's retirement. Um, introduced uh, they this past year uh, wide receiver Garrett Wilson, team secondary second leading receiver uh, with seven hundred and twenty three yards and six touchdowns which is very impressive. Uh, five-star defensive end Zach Harrison also made an impact. He'll be back. Uh, outside of that, um, they have a lot of young guys that they'll be developing. They'll be doing some big things with uh, new, co- you know, head coach Ryan Day. Excited. I've heard him say some good things about a few good kids. Uh, but you know, just with that, we'll see. Justin Fields, like I said, moving on. They were just in the championship uh, recently. But um, some teams that Justin could be going to, I mean, there's just quite a few. You know, everyone's kind of wanting that quarterback that can, you know, be mobile, have a good arm all in one, you know, swoop of being a very impressive leader on a team. And 
there are a few quarter uh, a few teams that really need need that and I know we'll be going for that in this draft. All right. Um some places that I think I've heard speak of it is probably the Carolina Panthers. Uh, they have a pretty decent high pick. Um, they could see them going with Justin Fields. You know, we, we see kind of their style, um, you know, coming even, I understand, like in the Ron Rivera era and having Cam there. And then they just had Teddy, but Teddy's just not getting it done. But I'm pretty sure, you know, that. You know, maybe they'll get Justin and bring back Cam, who's a free agent, just to mentor him and uh, move from there. But uh, I don't think the relationship is honestly good enough. I don't know if Cam will go back to the Panthers. Uh, maybe hear more. But, I mean, they'll also have that option of possibly getting Mac Jones from Alabama, which is where I'm going next. Okay. Moving on to Alabama. Number one undefeated Alabama, oh my goodness, only team to beat the treacherous Texas A&M University. But no, they went 13-0 this past season, number one team in the final AP poll, uh, won a championship because they had the Heisman winner stud, Devontae Smith, who was unstoppable. Uh, shoot, he's been st- unstoppable all season, but that game there, my goodness, it just wasn't even fair. Uh, also, um, won't have Najee Harris anymore, the star running back. Both of those uh, kids are possible first round picks, so that that's impressive. Bama always produces, um, you know, some great talent that always end up. Um, but you know, it, it's funny because when we're talking about Alabama, it's like, oh, they're losing all this talent. But what you don't understand is that they got talent piled up over there, okay? And they got Nick Saban and. They have all these recruits that they have topped the boards with recruiting uh, for decades, almost feels like now. And, of course, they are leading the way with 70 players going to be on their roster there in the top 300. 70. 70 means they can make about three different offenses, three different defenses of top recruits. <laughs> Okay, that that that's uh, impressive. But uh, uh, despite that, like I said, um, losing them, uh, for, they they have five star quarterback Bryce Young, who uh, could come become the next quarterback uh, after Mac Jones, uh, since he's leaving. Um, there, I'm pretty sure I've heard them mention them that you know everybody, because well, and uh, I mean sorry. With Alabama, they usually have great kids kind of just, you know, getting better in the background until it's their turn, and he's one of those guys. So that's why I say that. Um, Over the past five recruiting classes, uh, Alabama has had the number one class three times and the number three class once. His lowest lowest ranking for the recruiting class is uh, six, and that was in 2018. All right. So they don't have too much to worry about there. Um, Bryce, like I said, I mentioned Bryce Young. He was, you know, uh, number one dual threat quarterback uh, for 2020 class. Uh, they'll be look, looking to running back. They, I mean, they'll lose uh, the running back Najee, like I mentioned, Devontae Harris, Jalen Waddle, uh, as well as multiple offensive linemen. All right, but. When it comes to the uh, offensive line, since 2018, they've had they've recruited five five star <laughs> offensive lineman recruits. Okay, naming a few: uh, Evan Neal, Pierce Quick, Tommy uh, Brock Meyer, J.C. Uh, Litham. So that won't be a problem. Uh, I think the only one that's kind of in question on who's going to be the starter for this position is uh, the running back position to replace Harris. They have three running backs to contend, uh, Brian Robinson Jr., Jace McLennan, and uh, Trey Sanders all all on this roster competing for that job. Uh, Apparently, they even signed in the upcoming graduating class a top recruit uh, in the top 300, uh, Kamar Wheaton. So... Uh, that one's going to be interesting to see who makes their way up there and uh, wins that that job. Uh, now, 
just to touch on one more team in the SEC, and I know it seemed like I was leaning that way. It's just, and I mean, I did talk about Ohio State, but uh, Georgia also is the Georgia also has a great comeback for uh, their their prospects uh, for their kids uh, with Kirby Smart. They have sixty one of the top three hundred coming uh, to play on their roster this next upcoming season. It's going to be exciting to see. Uh, again, you might lose a couple players, uh, but from 2019 to 2021, Georgia signed 29 of the top 100 recru- recruits, including five stars, uh, Nolan Smith, Clay Webb, Keeley uh, Ringo, Broderick Jones, Jalen Carter, and Smil Modden. Okay? So, I definitely think that this is going to be a year that they get to turn around. You know, they got a lot of good recruits. They didn't have a terrible season last year. It's just that I think some things will be a little different. They went 8-2 and two this past season. It was the number, finished number 7 on the AP poll. Uh, quarterbacks, uh, their quarterback, running back. Uh, and receivers are among uh, and top receivers have, are among people that will be returning. Um, so we'll see. It'd be definitely, like I said, an exciting game to watch. But that's just a little take on a few of the top programs. Who's leaving? Who will be back? Uh, who is? What are some of those top prospects looking like going into the league? Where they might go? Um, I definitely again. This is the off season. We're going to be talking about this multiple times for the next few months till the season is beginning. So I'll give more information on all of that very soon on the next episode. You may get some updates. You may hear uh, that some people are moving. Some people are transferring. That happens in the off season when it comes to the NCAA. Kids like to go to other schools to get other opportunities, especially if they didn't win the winning job. Okay, so. Again, we got one more segment. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. back welcome back thanks for sticking around oh, this is gsmc football podcast i'm your host dj youngs uh we've been talking about multiple things i gave you the news of the day the news of the week uh given that information what's been said around the league what's been happening in the ncaa uh moved into me teaching you guys a few things about what a salary cap is how it affects the deals how the contracts are put together for the players um and then got into the NCAA a little bit more, learning more about what the top teams are looking like, who left and uh, who was still standing tall, who's coming back, and where some of those top players leaving those top programs might be going. Um, next, I'll be going and leaning into the free agency market. As of today, uh, you know, today is March 10th. Uh, you guys will be hearing this uh, as of tomorrow, March 11th. But what's things looking like? What we haven't heard about uh, yet. But uh, I'm going to start off uh, with, you know, some people that may not be of big names as far as look, where, where, where they're going. Uh, and then I'll make my way up to who are going to be very valuable. So I try to go from least valuable to most valuable. But don't get me wrong when I say the word valuable. These are all still great players. I mean, clearly in the NFL, and I wouldn't even be talking bringing the name up if they were just, like, irrelevant. It's just more of uh, who will make the biggest impact elsewhere, right? So the one I want to talk about here, and I don't remember if I talked about it in the last 
episode is Rob Gronkowski. And I know, you're like, wait, I thought you were starting from the bottom. No, the reason I'm talking about Rob here is Rob was on a one-year deal with Tampa Bay, right? He came back out of retirement, came there, uh, won this championship with Tom, got him some uh, touchdowns in the Super Bowl and everything, right? So, he only signed a one-year deal. We haven't really heard anything else come about. But one thing I know that he has said that I don't see any reason why he would tell a story about this. But it's that as long as he plays in the National Football League, he will only play for Tom with Tom Brady. It's the only person that he will catch a ball from. So Rob Gronkowski isn't going anywhere. He's technically not a free agent. He's either retiring or going to go run it back again with Tom, uh, which I'm pretty sure that will be the case. They just haven't released what's going to happen. Uh, moving along, another top receiver, Golden Tate. Uh, he was just on the New York Giants. Uh, had an okay experience there. He didn't do too much. Uh, of course, the team itself didn't do much. NFC East, you know how that goes. He will be turning 33 this season, so he still has a little bit more gas in the tank, I believe, to make a difference for at least one more team if he goes somewhere else or if the Giants decide to re-sign him. Uh, just haven't heard news on what exactly is going to happen there yet. All right. Another receiver, uh, Adam Humphreys. Uh, he was just on Tennessee Titans. Um, he did have two, you know, injuries uh, that shortened his season, unfortunately, uh, with the Titans. And, um, you know, they ended up releasing him uh, last month. Uh, in 18 games, Humphrey managed, you know, fewer receptions and yards and touchdowns than he compiled in the final season with the Buccaneers in 2018. Um, it's worth noting that the uh, Patriots, you know, may be pursuing him uh you know, out of curiosity uh, and hoping that he can help bring some talent over their way because they've been missing it. Now, to my boy Cam, all right, Cam turns 32 this year. Cam Newton was a Super Bowl quarterback. Cam Newton was a league MVP. He's elite. This past year, I don't want to say it was disappointing. It just wasn't what... Cam or any of us really expected, I guess. Um, we understand that's why he's no longer with the Patriots. They signed for one year. Uh, they were kind of looking for that turnaround immediately. Uh, that wasn't going to happen. I'm pretty sure Bill Belichick is making moves currently to get that. Rumor has it that you know, he may be trying to get his boy Jimmy G back. Wouldn't be surprised if he makes some type of trade in order to get Jimmy uh, I doubt they'd want to rely on um, a new guy, a rookie, coming out in the draft. So I definitely think they'll be getting someone else uh, quite reliable off of the free uh, agency or either through a trade. Um, but back to Cam Newton. Um, he finished the season with a 47.1 QBR. It was a number 30 out of 33 quarterbacks who qualified for the, you know the final rankings of it. Uh, he was one of two players on the list who threw more interceptions than touchdowns. He only had eight touchdowns to his ten interceptions. Uh, but he's still Cam Newton, you know. You still, I don't think we're going to just give up on him yet. I think at least one more chance somewhere. Um, again, it's plenty of quarterbacks in the market. It's, pretty, it's a good handful of great quarterbacks coming into the draft. So I don't know for a fact what is going to happen uh but hoping that he gets one more chance okay uh another quarterback is andy dalton everybody probably forgot about poor andy dalton especially after Dak just got signed his big deal so we know who's going to be the starting quarterback for the cowboys now um but nonetheless um after everything that happened to him this season which you know he tried to continue on to lead the Cowboys, who uh, he, while he started, he just led them to a three and three record. Um, he threw ten in his, uh, three, ten touchdowns, sorry, and four interceptions, ranking him number fifteen in QBR. Uh, so I mean, but he still was a, a long time starting quarterback while he was there in uh, Cincinnati. Um, I think again, someone else that deserves the right opportunity. I believe he's going to end up being possibly somebody's backup, though, like he was for Dak just now. Uh, I don't know if the 
Cowboys are going to want to keep him as a backup because after seeing their three, four backups down this past season, who knows what's going to happen um, for them. But they're definitely going to need somebody to come behind Dak. That's for sure. That's for fact. Okay. Um, Jadavion Clowney. The reason I say it like that is because he's had some interesting times in the league. You know, he came in as, I guess, what a lot of people want to see as the next um, J.J. Watt, uh, you know, Aaron Donald. Like, just that defensive lineman force. Yeah, he, he plays edge, uh, and he's good. Uh, when he was with the Seahawks, he recorded three sacks in 13 games, and that was in 2019. Uh, but then he struggled to reach, you know, agreement uh, last spring. Uh, he then he ended up signing with the Titans and didn't record a single sack in eight games before he got a knee injury that ended his season. All right, now Clowney does bring pressure on about 11% of his rushes. Uh, I guess that, that that makes him good enough for number 10 in the league in that in that position doing that. So he's still relevant. Uh, no reason to believe that. This is the end. This is, you know, people are always going to want those D linemen. I feel like uh, D linemen with, that create that type of pressure, which gets to the quarterback, are like literally top three commodity in the league. Uh, you know, you're going to want a quarterback. You're going to want uh, a pressure creator, a disruptor on your D line. And then next up, you're looking for a playmaker and a receiver or a running back. Um, I believe that's how most of the league would see it. That's how I see it. Uh, moving on. Another edge, important edge rusher uh, is uh, Melvin Ingram uh, with the Los Angeles Chargers he just played with. Um, got into free agency. He's going to turn 32. Okay, so again, someone that still might have a little time. But uh, with the loss of this past season, uh, it's kind of you know on the downside. He didn't do as well as usual, which is why I guess he didn't sign again with the Chargers. Uh, but he has—he's a great pass rusher, and you know, as just in general, he's, there's always a reason that you know you don't necessarily hold back uh, moving forward on a, a player like this. He um, has a few more years left, and he'll be again. Th- there's teams out there that I know are in the market for pass rushers, uh, Buffalo being one. So the two people I just mentioned in Ingram and Clowney, you know, I could definitely see Buffalo who just went to their AFC championship who lack with uh, pressure on quarterbacks, definitely giving these guys a call, at least talk to them, at least one train with them, seeing uh, what they could possibly give to a team. All right. Let's talk Richard Sherman real quick. Richard Sherman, who played for the San Francisco 49ers. He's getting up there. He's turning 33 this year. Um, He's probably in that, you know, going to be doing that year to year with teams as they see what they, where he is and if he's keeping up with everything. Um, He did have 11 game stint of injury, uh, you know, injury reserve this past season. Uh, because his calf injury, so he also kind of looks a little beat up. But um, definitely a veteran, I believe, that will have a little more time. Like I said, but that's why I said I think it will be more of a year-to-year type deal. I don't think he'll get any big long-term contracts anymore. Um, he has great cover skills, so that's something that I'm pretty sure a lot of teams, coaches, administration, and everybody is looking at to add to their team. All right. Um, moving on to Awuzie, Chidobi Awuzie, cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I personally think Awuzie is a solid player. Um, I think, you know, the, despite the struggles of the Cowboys defense, he, he was a play. He has become been and been growing to become a playmaker. Now, they did, uh, you know, get Diggs, a, a young cornerback recently and I believe so, there's rumor that they might be looking into getting another cornerback upcoming in the uh, next draft but uh, Awuzie he hasn't um, gotten like just a lot of interceptions but he, he gets his hand on the ball he, he disrupts he um 
knocks balls down and things of that nature. He recorded a total of uh, only, you know, four interceptions in 49 career games and missed half of the 2020 season because of his hamstring. But I think that gives, you know, him the opportunity to make a comeback. Um, he's only 26 years old. He has a lot to, you know, move forward for, a lot to do um, to add to a team. Okay. Anthony Harris is a, a safety came out of Minnesota. Well, he just played in Minnesota this past year, all right? Just 29 years of age. Uh, he he was, you know, a, a surprise uh, that the franchise tag, you know, that he got fran- – was could possibly be franchise tagged after six interceptions in the 2019 season. So they put him on the franchise tag, making it a one-year deal. Uh, like the rest of the Vikings defense, uh, he did not – match his previous year because they just kind of took left and we didn't see that coming uh we definitely i thought the vikings would have been one of the teams that would have been in the top after their performance in the 2019 season um but that wasn't the case uh they the defense itself finished you know harris and company had zero interceptions uh definitely want to be able to get those turnovers for your team that helps win games you know but he's still smart. Uh, he still has great uh, eyes and being able to be where he needs to be on the field. Um, a positive player. Uh, no no disruptive things in the locker room. So um, I'd say he'd be top 25 players available, especially if you need yourself a safety. All right. Another cornerback, Patrick Peterson, who is uh, entering the market uh, after being with the Arizona Cardinals, just turned 31. Um, he, he's played better, of course, we know. Like, he's made a name for himself before the 2020 season. But I think a lot of people have to understand, and I, I hope a lot of organizations, teams, and coaches understand that 2020 wasn't a normal year for anyone, <laughs> you know, any organization. It, it was definitely a lot different. I don't know. I'm pretty sure in some cases there might have been an advantage uh, where, you know, you might be able to succeed because of certain people not being that that opted out or not being healthy because there were plenty of injuries this year, too, unfortunately. Or, you know, it was tougher because of this, the same reasons. Right. So, uh, you know, just giving some statistics, pro football focus calculated uh that quarterbacks had a 96.2 passer rating when throwing in his direction, which is crazy. So, you know, if you're a stats person, that's probably a bad look. Uh, you probably don't want anything to do with that. But at the same time, there are rarely even, you know, a few other quarterbacks available in free agency market that are going to give you something better. Uh, he's, again... He's Patrick Peterson. I think a lot of people are just adjusting and trying to get used to some things, you know, uh, in this upcoming season. Next, a receiver that I believe is kind of rated kind of high is Will Fuller. I mentioned him on the last episode, and I don't want to say he's overrated, but with the the injuries he's had over all these years and uh I don't know. I haven't seen enough from him personally. Like, you know, they make a name for himself because you got Deshaun Watson making plays. He might have some big touchdowns and stuff that get him open. But, like, Will Fuller has never played a 16-game season. He's missed 27 games over the span, you know, over his, uh, what is it, five years? Yeah. Over the five years, he's um, been in the league. And uh, went on the field, you know, he does... He's been one of the NFL's top deep threats, like I said, but, you know, his because his, his average is 9.3 yards gained uh, per target, which ranks among the top 10 in the NFL uh, among qualified receivers who of the past five seasons. Um, but, like I said, it, 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 I feel like that was more on what the rest of the team was doing. It, you know, a lot of this came with uh, D-Hop being there and, you know, them double putting more pressure on him and Deshaun Watson and extending the play. This is what got Will Fuller to, you know, probably make a name for himself. Again, I'm not trying to take anything away from him because, I mean, I, I, I play receiver. I know, hey, catch the ball and making plays is 
your job and you want to be the best at it and i'm pretty sure he does but as far as being shoot in the top three as many receivers that are in this this pool of agents or free agency uh there's still i believe a lot to choose from one being curtis samuel curtis samuel has been playing with the carolina panthers he's only 25 uh he said his career high reception, 77 and uh, yards, 851 in this past season. While, oh, excuse me, he also played multiple multiple positions. Got 41 carries, uh, you know, because of 41 different positions, jet sweeps and things of that nature. Uh, he rushed for 200 yards and two touchdowns uh, while converted to 10 first, while converting 10 first downs, and he would be, you know. One of the the top guys, I'd say, in this pool of free agents, okay, especially in the receivers, like he that he's on his way. Like, listen to me, whatever team he goes to, if they put him in the right scheme, uh, he's definitely going to make a difference for them. Now, the one that I think that a lot of people are speaking about, the number one receiver that a lot of people would like to say is a uh, Juju Smith Schuster. Uh, Juju uh, coming off Pittsburgh. Um, only 24. Uh, he didn't show up like I think a lot of people thought he would after uh, AB left. Uh, which, I mean, was obvious because, hey, if you're not the number one, then clearly it's a little bit easier for you to get open. So now that he was the number one, I'm pretty sure things were different. There was controversy about him doing dancing and stuff like that. Um, but um, you know, playing with the Steelers, uh, short pass game, he caught 97 passes, ninth most in the NFL, and averaged 8.6 yards per catch. That was the third lowest among the wide receivers who caught at least 50 passes in 2020. Uh, perform- the performance was more of a change of perspective on what he could possibly do uh, long term for them. So I think that's why we haven't heard anything as far as if anyone's going to get him or if the uh, Steelers are going to re-sign him. Um, I think he's definitely a talent, but I believe that he's a talent that needs to be around other receivers and that they can all lean on each other, you know, kind of like how the Browns are. Um, but we will see what happens there. Uh, A.J. Green from Cincinnati Bengals, another free agent, another guy who's been doing it for a long time. Uh, he's a seven-time pro bowler, played in you know, all 16 games last season uh, after he missed the 2019 season and um, seven games in 2018. Um, on, a bad t- on the bad side, the, he had the least productive year of his career uh, with 47 receptions for 523 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, him with no, I guess, you know, his good old buddy Dalton being gone, I guess – they didn't have the same type of deal. Uh, Joe, Bur- Joe Burrow came in and he got injured. So you definitely had to work with, I guess, what you call a skeleton crew. So he, I'm, he probably tried his best, but it didn't go as planned. Okay. Uh, Joe Thunny, the from the New, uh, New England Patriots, a uh, young guy. Uh, the Patriots used a franchise tag on him in 2020. Got another 16 games out of him, and um, he hasn't missed the start since the Patriots made him uh, a third round draft pick in 2016. So you'd think they'd uh, hold him highly, but uh, it hasn't, news hasn't came out about it yet on what they're going to do. Uh, knowing the Patriots, I'm pretty sure they're going to do right by him. They're going to keep him. Uh, I don't think he will be technically a free agent for long, okay? Now, one of my favorites here. That his dude, you know, you know, that did his thing uh, recently is uh, Corey Davis. Okay, he uh, has definitely, you know, done his thing to be the number one receiver for the Titans. Um, and in the four years, he has caught a total of eleven touchdowns. Well, actually, I take that back. So I, what I meant was that he became, he was the number one, and you know, definitely become number two recently after. 
uh, A.J. Brown's performance these past year. He's only, in the past four years, he's only caught 11 touchdown passes while, you know, never having a 1,000-yard season. Um, you, granted, the Titans uh, are, are folk, a run-focused type team would, uh, you know, to open up the play action, play action to get receivers like A.J. Brown open. Um, so the Titans end up declining the fifth-year option for him and, uh, and he was looking for a change of scenery. He's hoping to go somewhere else, uh, make some big plays, hopefully. Uh, again, somebody else that I think will do well if he gets complimentary receivers on his side. Okay. Uh, Shaquille Barrett, Big Shaq out of Tampa Bay. I mentioned earlier uh, in 2019, produced 19.5 sacks. Um, his eight. Sack season in 2020 and made clear that you know he remains a a, a decent pass rusher. It just wasn't going to meet his pass standards. So I'm pretty sure that he'll be picked up. I don't know who's going to go get him, but someone else again, like I mentioned earlier, that definitely needs you know people to get back there and disrupt things. The Miami Dolphins, um, the New York Jets need a little bit of everybody. <laughs> uh, teams like that. Uh, Aaron Jones, I believe, is a number one running back in free agency. Uh, Green Bay Packers, you know, definitely released him. But uh, he had a great season this year with Aaron Rodgers. Like, it was the Aaron and Aaron show. And I don't know if Green Bay wasn't watching that, but he was making the plays for them. Uh, Only 26 came in in that 2017 dynamic class with Dalvin Cook. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, uh, Tariq uh, Cohen, Joe Mixon, like uh, the whole gang of people. And uh, out of everyone, he's number two in rushing yards, only behind Dalvin Cook. So, someone get him out there, man. Make that guy the D guy. He he already pretty much there. You just got to get him the rest of the way. All right. Uh, last person I want to touch on is someone I mentioned earlier that uh, didn't get the franchise tag from the Steelers, which is Bud Dupree. Uh, since it started in 2019 uh, with Steelers, uh, he had 19 point sacks that year, um, which is still good enough to be in the top eight. <laughs> it, it you know this past year, well, it's uh, he. Since the start of 2019, Dupree has more sacks, 19.5, than all of but seven players. That's what I mean by it being in the top eight, okay? And that's despite missing even the final five games after he just tore his ACL this year. So, I mean, some people might be a little hesitant on the injury, but you got to understand the type of damage that this guy can commit out there. Uh <laughs> Yeah, he deserves a contract to get on another, you know, a pass rushing team, needed team uh, that clearly there are plenty out there. You know, if you can't disrupt the quarterback, then they're going to continue to make the plays that need to be made and beat you when it's when it hurts. You know, when the end of games and the beginning of games, uh, letting them get away too far. But we'll see. That is um, all I got right now for all of the. Uh, free agent that this past season. I mean, this as of right now. I don't know what's going on. Free agents as of right now, and um, definitely gonna keep up with it all. Uh, again, some of the things we talked about today in earlier segments that you're gonna be hearing a lot more about uh, moving forward. Not just the free agency, but what's going on in the NCAA, the top teams, uh, the recruits, who's going to be starting in positions because some of them have to compete. Uh, what is the salary cap? Uh, what, and how does it work? We're gonna be. We got the salary cap today that was announced earlier today. Uh, the salary cap for the NFL being at uh, 182, 182.5 million. Uh, the NFL being at one hundred eighty two, one hundred eighty two point five million. But you know, contracts are going to be signed soon. A lot of people. That's what they're in the talks of. Um, and then free agency, man. Uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. I th- thank you for listening to the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask you to please remember to subscribe 
you know give comments i know look i'm just i'm learning uh i'm gonna get better i'm bringing stuff to you but i would love to also just get feedback in general some things maybe you want to hear about maybe we want to talk about um the podcast loves uh getting that type of information um please follow us on facebook twitter and instagram uh gsmc underscore football uh thank you and once again good night Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program